What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another look at recent sales for the Hasbro Star Wars Vintage Collection line. Lots of interesting sales, uh, both graded as well as ungraded. I picked out a couple of more dioramas that I didn't know existed that look really awesome that I wanted to show you. Uh, before we dig in any further, I know everyone knows this news already, but I did want to say rest in peace to Carl Weathers. We obviously know him in Star Wars world from... The Mandalorian series and, and his portrayal as Grief Karga. I loved Carl Weathers. I just thought he was a great dude, uh, a great actor, really. And he's been in a number of movies that are personal favorites of mine. Obviously, the Rocky series, uh, which I watched pretty religiously growing up on repeat. Uh, my favorite Carl Weathers movie is definitely Predator. Uh, Predator is in my top five in terms of those 80s action movies. Just an awesome movie. Action Jackson is a very underrated movie from the time period that really fits the time period. And I, I thought I was kind of reading about Carl Weathers after his unexpected passing. And an interesting side note is that he came in to read for the Rocky movie, the original Rocky movie. And uh, I guess his portrayal during the read through of the script didn't go that well. And he said, well, if you get me an actor... Uh, that actually knows what he's doing, it would have gone a lot better. And apparently it was just very awkward and stilted. But he was reading next to Sylvester Stallone. Little, do his, little did he know that Sylvester Stallone wrote the, wrote the movie and wrote the script and, and obviously was going to be starring in it. But he, he kind of didn't know who he was and, and was ripping on his acting skills. So it was just a, kind of a hilarious side note. But I, I thought the coolest thing about Carl Weathers was that he could make fun of himself. You know, obviously from the Happy Gilmore uh, scene uh, with his portrayal as Chubb. And I just thought he was hilarious. And if you haven't seen his acting in Arrested Development, that was another thing that was criminally underrated. I mean, he was just so, so funny in that. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that he brought a lot to The Mandalorian. He kind of grounded, especially the first season. I thought he really grounded the first season. And, you know, his directing skills are not to be scoffed at. I mean, he, he did a great job in the one episode. I think it was season two that he directed. It was actually one of my favorite episodes. It was a, a very fast-paced kind of episode where I, where I think that they were kind of trying to uh, destroy the research base. Uh, and just lots of lots of great memories from him. He, he, he's gone way too soon. But I did want to mention that before we dig, dig in any further. I also did want to say thank you to Laugh It Up Fuzzball 70 He sent me another super for a recent video. So I really appreciate the channel support from all of my Patreon supporters. And, and thank you for the super. Very kind of you. Uh, Dwayne was another gentleman, Dwayne Custer. He also sent me a massive super the other day. So uh, you guys are just really awesome for, for supporting the channel. So let's dig in. I've got a few, uh, nothing crazy, but I wanted to kind of show a few items. The first was a... Foil Clone Commander Cody, and note to the seller, you want to take it out of the star case, which is obviously dusty. I mean, it's like he pulled it off the wall of his of his man cave and didn't bother to take it out of the, the star case. It had some kind of waviness to it, which I think could come out, but maybe one little chip or something in the lower right-hand corner, some edge wear there. So that all of those factors kept the price down, but I think that if you take, take it out of the star case for the photos and flatten the card out by putting some books gently on top of... of the cards for a week or so that really does flatten the card back out when you have that card wave. Uh, but this one was a foil and it sold, it was listed for $140. It sold for 105, 105 us dollars for that one. I've seen, usually they sell around 120 to 150, anywhere in that ballpark for ones that are mint. This one did have some edge wear to it. So next up, we had to talk about this one. This is one. And I had my what to buy video and I said, Hey, you know, Buy with caution. I don't know if this is truly an unpunched co uh, clone commander, Cody. We all know how expensive those normally are. They are very pricey, even with a drop somewhat in prices for the vintage collection from those COVID highs. Uh, this one was advertised as unpunched. It did have two thumbtacks on the puncher tab there. It, to me, it looks like it's unpunched, okay? I, I don't know for a fact, but... You know, it was definitely had some issues. I think because it was already thumbtacked through, that will obviously bring the price down a little bit. Now, it sold for one eighty seven fifty in an auction. So it seems like the market's saying we don't believe you that it's unpunched. But in my opinion, you know, it, it would be very weird to 
to take the, the hole punch and put it back in and have it look as clean as it does. But, you know, it, it is thumbtacked through, so I guess people are valuing this as it being a punched example because who knows whether that thumb that hanger tab is in there fully and still kind of attached versus just th put back in there. But to me, it looks like it's unpunched. I, you know, it's debatable, though. You can, you can make the argument that it's been put back in there. Here was a nice close-up. At least he did a nice close-up for you, so... Anyway, I, I just thought it was interesting enough to put in my what to buy video because I wanted people to make that judgment for themselves. And it seems like the, the market judged this as being valued at what a punched example of Clone Commander Cody goes for. So that one sold for $187.50. Now, unpunched examples, I just saw one that sold on Facebook the other day for like, I think it was 500 euros or 500, it might have been 500 pounds. I can't remember exactly. I should have looked it up. But we documented on the channel uh, a an, un, an unpunched one that was ungraded that sold for over 1300 I believe, last year during the kind of craziness what that was the market. There is an AFA-graded example on eBay right now for, I think, $1,300 uh, that, was, that is still has not sold yet. So uh, it's just interesting to see what Clone Commander Cody goes for unpunched because it's a big number usually. Uh, next up was probably still one of my favorites. I love Clone Commander or just Commander Gree. I don't know what it is about this card bag. It just really pops to me. I just love everything about this figure. And there are apparently two uh, different packaging examples for this one. And this one had the binoculars or the backpack. I guess not the binoculars. The, the backpack, uh, it they, they comes either on his back, I guess, or it's splayed out inside the blister. So this one was not perfect. It did have one little ding at the top of the card back there, VC43, VC43. So this was the U.S. card unpunched. A really nice example, other than that one little ding. That one sold for 150. So uh, that's a that's a kind of a price that's a little bit down. But I, I think it was nice that the seller did disclose the ding on the top of the card there. But uh, very very nice example there overall for that price. Two different pr Princess Leia slave outfits, VC-64 sold. This one was a punched example, Revenge of the Jedi, with the prototype Fed offer. So this is the retail version with the paperwork inside the blister. Very nice example, though, with the star case. That one, or with the acrylic case, that one sold in an auction for $187.50, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Card looked to be in pretty awesome condition overall. So that was a punched example. And then here was an unpunched example still inside the star case. This one was... The Return of the Jedi with the paperwork inside. No prototype FET offer sticker. So whether it got missed in the factory or whether the sticker was taken off the front of the card, I don't know. But uh, overall, pretty clean condition. Uh, but I, I would say that they should have taken it out of that figure shield personally for photos. But at first blush, it looks pretty nice. There, it looks like there's some edge wear in the lower right-hand corner as well as right here. So, you know, you got to be careful because I'm not saying the seller was doing that, but... Some sellers try to hide defects by putting it inside the case. Some sellers are just too lazy to take it out of the case for photos, but always take it out of the, out of the case. And then if you're a buyer, you really got to look at those photos closely. And if there's any question whatsoever, just walk away, find something else. But, I, you know, I, I'm not try I don't think this seller was trying to hide anything because they did a good job of showing every angle. Uh, but you can see some of the edge wear down there in the lower right portion of the card back and then... A, there was some kind of scuffing or, or dings up here as well. So, uh, but just be careful when you're buying. You know, you, you never know what's trying, what kind of hijinks people are trying to pull. Uh, this one did sell in an auction for two hundred nine twenty seven, which it makes sense, right? Because given these two defects, that one right there and then right here, uh, that that's that's about right two hundred nine. Uh, given that unpunched, really clean examples where you know that it's in really clean shape based on the photos. You're easily going to spend, let's say, three fifty for an unpunched example. So that was the Return of the Jedi again with the paperwork inside. Next up is an Ahsoka. This was the U.S. card unpunched. A little bit of card curl, but otherwise fairly clean. You know, probably eighty-five grade condition. That one sold for one forty-one fifty. That was again the U.S. card back. Uh, next up is a Shade Vizsla. This only had one photo, but this one had the Darth Maul offer unpunched U.S. card, character debut, so this is the first issue. This one sold for 173 which that's up a little bit. It seems like they've been kind of more around 100 to 125 but I think we talked about that in the last video, how it's popped up back up a little bit in price. So this is another example of that. 
173.33 plus twelve dollar shipping. Uh, the Sand Trooper. This is one I had in my what to buy video. I know some of you have been looking for that unpunched VC 112, the Dirty Paint app Sand Trooper. Uh, that one sold for eighty one dollars, which was that's the lowest price I've seen in a while. Now it did have a defect on the hanger tab. You can see it's got that little kind of crease going through on the hang tab, which you usually do see that on the on the Hasbro Canada unpunched examples. It's some kind of factory defect that almost all the hang tabs that I see for Kenner Canada or Hasbro Canada vintage collection all have that defect. But this one was the U.S. card with that defect, so it just must have been some kind of factory issue. But otherwise, very clean card, and uh, $81 is the lowest price I've seen in a while for that one. So hopefully one of y'all were able to pick that one up for a good deal there. I want to talk about Jocasta New. Uh, she has really jumped back up in price. She got it jumped up to like $300, <clears throat> and then she kind of dropped back down into like the 170, 150 175 range. But lately, it's been going back up again. Uh, this one is the Brian's Toys exclusive with all of the packaging and everything. This one, this seller is Brian's Toys, I believe. No, this is Star Wars Galaxies, a different seller. Uh, this seller had 10 of them available. Four of them have sold for $218 plus $2 shipping, $250 shipping. So uh, if you're looking for one, I'll put a link in the video description to this Jocasta New because... Uh, this seller does still have six available, but I point this out because a loose one complete sold recently in an auction. This was up in Canada for 113 US dollars. So this is just loose, not still mint on card. So that just shows you how much she's jumped up a little bit. And I know that loose collectors are maybe a little different than mint on card collectors. I know there's some of you that do both, uh, but I, I did want to point out that it seems like Jocasta News jumped up just a little bit in price given that a mint loose complete sold for 113 and then you got this one still in the big box that's velcro pack you know velcro packed with a kind of a window this seller's got six of those still available at $218 $220 with shipping so again if you want to buy one of those I'll put a link in the video description that helps out the channel uh, next up, this one fell under the radar. I could not believe this. I wish I had seen this. I would have pointed it out to y'all. But this one was a mint and sealed box Toys R Us exclusive Republic gunship. And it sold only one bid for $325 plus $30 shipping. That's $350. Now, the packaging wasn't perfect, but it was still in really good shape overall. You know, not perfect, but very good shape. And it sold for $325. Now, these have been usually selling in anywhere from $600 to $800. So I was shocked that this one only had one bid. It must have just fallen underneath the radar because I didn't see it either. Otherwise, I certainly would have alerted you guys to it in a what to buy video. So the Toys R Us exclusive gunship, that was a bargain of a deal. Nobody bid on it. $355 after shipping on that. That was a steal of a deal. Congratulations, whoever got that one. Uh, now I've got some graded figures that I wanted to point out. Ewok Mania over in the UK has had a number of very high grade TVC that I've sold. And I know that a few Patreons have been buying these left and right. They've mentioned them to me. So this was a U95 grade Princess Leia Organa. This is not the error card. This is the correct VC150. There was an error, which I think was VC164. Uh, that one is, you know, obviously Cara Dune. But this VC-150 is what she's supposed to have. So this was corrected. Uh, this was an uncirculated 95. And it sold for 155 pounds, which is 196 US dollars. Very desirable card bag. Beautiful card image there of Car uh, Carrie Fisher. And then we had the Mimbin Stormtrooper. This was the Walmart exclusive. Graded UKG 90. That one sold for 43 pounds. That was an absolute bargain. Just given what it costs to ship this to UKG plus the grading cost, plus shipping back. Then you got to sell it, plus shipping. So I, I thought that was a great deal. And I know somebody in the UK picked this one up, uh, but very, very good deal. And I, they usually sell for more than this ungraded. So that was a bargain, at least over here in the US. They sell for more like, I'd say 75 to 85 bucks here in the US for the Mimbin Stormtrooper. So very nice example there. Very high grade, great deal. Uh, the Scar Scarif Stormtrooper, this one was an uncirculated 90. That one sold for 47 pounds which is 59 US dollars. Another bargain of a deal there, uh, just given that the Scarif Stormtrooper is definitely one that 
is very desirable for, for many collectors. Uh, Han Solo and Carbonite. This is another one that seems to be jumping up in price and because I found a number of ungraded examples that sold for a lot of money as well. So this was a graded 90. This was, I believe, a pack-in, was it not? Uh, Hasbro Europe 8-back Return of the Jedi. I thought this was a pack-in for the Star Wars, uh, the uh, Jabba the Hutt play set or, or hallway. Uh, it came like with decorative kind of heads and things like that. So I think that this one, it was packed in with Han Solo and Reyes. But this one was a 90 grade and it sold for 153 pounds, which is 194 US dollars. And you're like, wow, that maybe is a one off. No, it's not. Because I found several other examples of Han Solo and Carbonite that go for a lot of money, you know, over 100 pounds, 125 US dollars, ungraded. So that's one that's definitely cre creeping up in price a lot. Next up, Captain Phasma. Always a card image I've liked. I know it's a sequel trilogy, but it's one that I've always liked. This was an uncirculated 95 grade that sold for 68 pounds. Another really good deal there. That's 86 US dollars. And uh, this seller had a UKG 95% Revenge of the Jedi Boba Fett. So this is from the Death Star, SDCC Death Star. That one sold for 200 pounds, which is 253 U.S. dollars. So very desirable item there. And, you know, occasionally you see them sell for about that much ungraded. Uh, more likely you're talking like 200, maybe 175 on the very low end. But uh, to get one already graded 95% from UKG for 200 pounds, that's not a bad deal at all. Very good deal there, I think. Uh, next up was a UKG 90% Boba Fett Morak. This is from, obviously, The Mandalorian. Great card image there on that one, VC-252. That one was listed for 200 pounds and sold for 170 pounds, which is 213 U.S. dollars. So, good buy on that one. Now we got the big boy. Now we've got the big boy. This was an AFA-graded salacious crumb, graded 9.0 on the modern scale. So, we know how expensive this one is. We just documented one. That sold for a lot of money, almost a thousand bucks, or it might have even been over a thousand bucks. That was ungraded and had condition issues. This one is obviously near mint plus condition, AFA 9.0, and it sold for eleven hundred dollars. So big number on that one. That was a buy it now situation, and it must not have last long because I didn't see it, or I would have certainly mentioned it. But uh, eleven hundred dollars is the new going rate for an AFA 9.0 salacious crumb from the Revenge of the Jedi SDCC Death Star set. Uh, and then I wanted to point out before we finish things off, these two uh, dioramas, I've talked about these dioramas lately from this seller, uh, and this, these are all Europe, or not they are not in Europe, but they are in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. But uh, he's got really good feedback, and I've actually heard from a number of you that have bought from this seller and have been really happy with the dioramas, the very, very high-quality dioramas. This is Lars's Garage. I just think that these things are incredible. I love the details on them. Look at the detail on these. It comes with all these little pieces. The paint apps and everything are just awesome. Uh, it's got some, you know, it looks like a, a moisture va uh, moisture evaporator evaporator that is uh, uh, moisture farming. Uh, so they're working on that. So it's just really, everything about it is just awesome. Look at the detail on it. Uh, the colors, uh, everything about it is awesome. So if you're into these things, four of these have already sold. There's three still available. These are scaled for three and three quarter inch vintage collection or vintage Kenner, if you wanted to, two figures. Uh, just awesome. It looks really, really cool. So that's one of them. This one is, I guess, it was originally from Landspeeder Deluxe for the Black Series. And so this seller in Sri Lanka is sizing them down using 3D printers for three and three quarter inch scale figures. So all pieces separated to print on a 200 millimeter 3D printer. And uh, pretty awesome, pretty, pretty cool design there. And I don't know if these come, I, do they come finished or is it just for the map? Custom diorama, this is a 3D printed model. You will get everything shown in the photos except for the action figures. Uh, shipped as several pieces, you will have to bond some parts together. So you just use, you know, some kind of like, glue or adhesive to, to glue them together. Uh, but it's scaled for three and three quarter inch. But I love this this, uh, this Star Destroyer bridge. Uh, I love the details down here. Uh, really, really cool for showing the Imperial officers at their computers. And then obviously, no disintegrations. It's just really, really awesome design there. So I don't know which one I like better. I think I like the Lars Homestead better, but this is obviously a more iconic display. And uh, if you're into kind of doing shelf spaces and things like that, 
I used to do this, but I don't do it anymore. But I, I just think it's so cool. I wanted to point them out. This one is $120. He's already sold one, and there's two still available. And so you got you got to wait. Just be you got to be patient. But I've I've heard from several of you that said they arrive. You just got to be patient in terms of how long the shipping takes. Uh, but they've been really happy with the quality of the of the work. So anyway, just wanted to point those out, and I'll put a link in the video description in case you want to, uh, to to make a purchase on one of those as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at some recent sales for the Vintage Collection. Thanks as always for watching. Please leave a like to help out with the algorithms, and I'll be back soon.